Hey guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Megan Freiberger and I cannot see anyone's camera except for the person speaking, including myself. Um, so just bear with me if I'm looking at something off to the side. Um, but tonight we are gonna have two of our master teachers, Erica and Kurt, and they're gonna share with us their experiences and tips and tricks um, with the finance and economics challenge. Um, and there will be a time if you have questions for them, um, they can kind of answer those at the end. And then also there's going to be um, a chance for you to earn some incentive money that I'll explain at the end if you um, uh, do anything financial literacy related in your classroom after these presentations. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Erica and she's going to get us started with the finance challenge. Well, hello everyone, I'm Erica, Erica Marshall that is, and I could forward my slides when sharing before and now it's not allowing it, how strange. Okay, uh, let me unshare, sorry guys. Sometimes, yep, here we go. When my screen is in presenter mode, it freezes up and doesn't let me, um, share. So hopefully, oops, hopefully everyone can hear me. Where did it go? Sorry, guys, I just am not believing this. Um, it has completely vanished. I see there it at the go. top, I think. There it is. I see it up there too, but it's um, now we see it. Is it? Okay, good. Yes. All right, great. Um, let me see if it'll let me go back in presenter mode again. Um, all right, so we'll see if it'll allow it. Okay, so I'm Erica Marshall and I'm at Beaufort High, um, financial literacy master teacher, uh, South Carolina master naturalist, and also a Palmetto environmental educator. So that's kind of a broad range of um, things combining business and conservation which I really love to portray in the classroom. But for today, I'm gonna to tell y'all a little bit about the finance challenge and my experience in that, um, actually having had several teams um, come first and third, uh, nobody in the last calendar school year did. I was kind of disappointed. Uh, um, seems like the governor's school really took it away um, recently from us. So we're going to come back now that we're in person and see what we can do. But the objectives here for tonight are that I can register for the finance challenge. I can use real world activities to build student engagement, and I can locate resources to improve financial literacy and decision making. So um, I usually do um, follow some of the standards, most of the standards, uh, which y'all are probably aware of on the South Carolina Department of Education website. But the standard I'm gonna focus on tonight is financial responsibility and decision-making. So making responsible financial decisions and consumer choices consistent with one's financial plan, including decision-making strategies on purchasing. So one of the things I really try to bring home to my students is um, their wants and needs. Uh, I teach marketing, but um, also rolled into my marketing intro marketing class is finance. So having them think about their wants and needs and what it's going to cost them to buy something that they want versus what they need is super important. Um, a lot of them think they like luxury brands. Um, from what I can see, a lot of luxury brands, particularly the belts, aren't necessarily working too well these days, but um, we can only hope. Um, anyway, I've got a couple of links in here which are blocked by all of y'all's faces. <laughs> but anyway, you can find this on the um, SD, SCDE website. So I'm not gonna like scan through that because I'm pretty sure y'all know where to find standards. Um, but anyway, so our agenda for tonight is going to include the finance challenge overview. Um, just kind of, we're not going to actually do an activity, but I'm going to kind of give you some screenshots of an activity that I do usually at the very beginning of school uh, called the fact bag. I'm um, going to navigate the South Carolina finance challenge site. 
and then maybe give you the opportunity to review registration for the finance challenge and show you some practice test questions that they make available to you and your students and then give you some of the resources that I use that have helped my students uh, throughout the semesters uh, to include Money Power, WISE, Financial Literacy Certification, and NGPF. Um, the moneypower.org, uh, I'm gonna show you some samples of their quizzes. I'm gonna review maybe an Edpuzzle activity with you because I find them, uh, the Two Cents team, invaluable. And then basically uh, review and with the evaluation survey at the end. And we're frozen again. Oh no. It just won't let me escape at times when I am in full screen. Hmm. Do you want to maybe right. try it again and you can just stay yep. off of full screen and uh, see if that helps? Yeah, I can definitely do that. That's what I've had to do in the past. It's really, really small. I think I need double reading glasses now. Um, all right, so um, my fact bag activity. Um, here's a project I give my students the first week of school or basically when my roster so is solid. Um, and it offers uh, creativity plus choices equaling I love to grade. I love to grade the fact bag activity. So um, think of a bag or backpack, duffel bag or purse that either you own or dream of owning. Uh, write something that you know about uh, financial literacy on it or something that you might like to learn about it. Um, perhaps if you buy it, how long would it take you to pay it off during um, if you used a credit card? Um, you would write this fact on the bag and then, um, you know, you can use a lot of different options. I've suggested that my students um, use Canva in order to do that. So here is a bag that I picked out. It's a nice little straw uh, purse bag. And um, I usually ask people what they think this bag costs. So I'm up for y'all letting me know what you think this little pocketbook costs. Uh, I guess you can write it in the chat or you can just straight up say it. Um, it's really cute. That's real leather, by the way. Any ideas? Anyone want to guess what you think it costs? $80. 80 That's good. And you're not close, though. Um, <laughs> this bag I found on Farfetch. It is a luxury website and it is $82,701. And actually it is not new, it is used. So it's a secondhand bag. I actually um, researched it and it did drop a couple of hundred dollars this year from last year. So that's a deal. But anyway, so that's exorbitant, right? Um, and a lot of students are like, oh, that's ugly. Who would do this? But anyway, um, what I did is I have this bank rate calculator and um, I have a link for y'all to look at. Everything's in the slideshow. Um, but basically the bank rate calculator will tell you if you pay the minimum amount uh, that they ask do, um, how long you're gonna be paying it and what it's actually gonna cost in the end if you don't pay it off on time. Um, so this bag will cost a total of $123,474.60. And I'm gonna have to get really close. It's gonna, it's gonna be years. I think it's like 552 months before I pay it off at $2,000 a month. 2,000 a month is the minimum. So, you know, when they all wanna walk around with all the fancy stuff and wear it to school and things like that, you know, I really ask them, um, you know, is it in uniform? And can you afford this? <laughs> Should you afford it? So anyway, I love to do the fact bag because a lot of them will just pick, you know, like a Nike backpack. Some will go over the top and pick something Louis Vuitton or Gucci. Got a lot of Gucci lovers in the house. But, um, you know, I get them to research it and then do that paying the minimum amount. And it kind of drives that point home. Um, so next. Um, so that's the fact bag um, slide. I also wanted to show you the Canva site. If you had not gone to Canva before, 
Um, this is one, I do a lot of projects in my class, finance related, and if they're lacking in creativity or if short on time or just you know need a little help, Canva, if you haven't played around with it, is an awesome link for them to use um, for developing posters, brochures, infographics, things like that. Um, so I've included those links on a couple of different slides just to make sure y'all can access them. Okay, so the South Carolina um, Economics is a fabulous sponsor of wonderful um, challenges and contests. Um, Finance Challenge is one that I particularly love to have students win because they incentivize the students in first, second, and third place. And they also incentivize the teacher of those students. So on um, the South Carolina economics.org page, you'll find that the South Carolina Finance Challenge is an opportunity for students to demonstrate their knowledge of personal finance by competing with other students across the state in multiple choice examinations. Um, and so first place gets $50. Everybody on the team plus the teacher gets a 50 check for 50. Uh, second place is 35 for each player and the teacher. And third is 25 for each player and the teacher. And those numbers I don't think have changed, have they? I'm, I'm pretty sure they're still the same. And pretty sure Rhonda is yeah, I the one. that's still the same. Okay. And uh, Rhonda is the one who will give you that nice check and it will come to you. And, um, you know, at the end of the semester, it's a great little Christmas gift if you are competitive. But anyway, so here's the website. If you come over here to the contest section, um, you'll locate the finance challenge. And this is where you can go um, to the teacher registration. And you're going to assemble uh, at least three people per team. You're going to go right here to register. Um, and I challenge y'all to do that tonight. So Chandler gets Bomba, or maybe is it Megan now? Megan, are you the one that gets all the emails? I am, yes. Yes. So I want y'all to bombard Megan's email with your registrations tonight. <laughs> so um, anyway, so you just kind of scroll through and um, she will confirm this. And then you guys, you'll get access codes. It's a little extra work, but remember, if y'all do well, and if you beat me, you'll get paid to beat me. So um, anyway, that is all good. Um, so anyway, again, I challenge y'all to go through that and to sign up tonight. All right, so the challenge is about to begin. Um, teacher registration begins now. And the dates for this one are fall uh, 2021, October 4th through November 24th. And then we've got a spring challenge coming up. Um, next semester, February 28th to April 15th. So y'all, as a part of your registration assignment, you're gonna go ahead and plug those dates into your phones or your desktop or wherever you keep your calendars. And um, y'all are gonna, y'all are gonna do this. Okay, so um, one of the, um, they give you some sample questions and um, they also will provide the answers for you. So you can, you can assign these to your students to kind of bolster their knowledge um, of the different questions that are out there and you can do practices. So again, you'll find that on um, South Carolina Economics and on the Finance Challenge page. Additional resources that I use are um, gonna be the moneypower.org. I love this one. Um, Wise Financial Literacy, which is the financial literacy test that all of the South Carolina financial literacy master teachers had to take in order to pass to get that certification. And your students can achieve that certification as well. Um, and then we've got Next Gen Personal Finance. So um, the reason I like the moneypower.org is they ask a question, it's multiple choice and they give you the feedback. So the question is, you know, what is the Fed referred to? And then it gives you the answer. Um, it gives you if you've gotten it right or wrong. But moneypower.org um, is, again, one that I really highly recommend that you register for. 
and that you um, utilize with your students to help train them um, in a lot of different areas. You can give tests in banking, credit, insurance, um, all kinds of things like that related to personal finance. So I find it invaluable. Um, okay, and then this is just a little more on the WISE financial literacy certifications. Um, these are links that you can use not only to get your students certified, but also to have your school rank uh, in the nation, but have, have your school ranked um, with WISE and um, become more of a financial literacy oriented school. Next Gen Personal Finance, you will find on the Department of Education site as well. Use this stuff all the time. They've got random question of the days. Um, they've got FinCap Fridays with Yanelli. Um, very, very current financial information, um, thorough lesson plans. You can pick and choose from it. It's voluminous, I'm not gonna lie. They do, I don't know how they put out so much good stuff, but they do. And um, they also incentivize teachers for professional development. So I can't say enough good about that. I've gotten lots of Amazon gift cards, thanks to NextGen. Um, so I appreciate that. Part of what I like is that they give some real world uh, arcade games like the Uber game. And I haven't had a student yet who does not like to play the games that they offer. But with the Uber game, it teaches you about making decisions. If you are a driver, you know, cost analysis of things like insurance, you know, purchase of a gas guzzler versus one that's not. And it basically will let you scroll through the game and play um, to see what you might earn given the different scenarios that you choose. So again, I feel that it's very timely, um, it's interactive um, and fun. And I feel like the combination of these things has helped my students over the past couple of years achieve success with the financial literacy knowledge and put a few dollars in their bank. So um, anyway, these are the, NG, as, as I said, NGPF has random financial literacy questions of the day in a variety of areas that are current and relevant. So um, the other one that I use, um, there's wide variety of Ed puzzles, but I particularly like two cents. So whenever I show an Ed puzzle by two cents, I ask the students what two cents means and why the actors chose that name. And I get a variety of you know reasons, and you know not a lot of young children know the expression. You know, it's the two your two cents worth. So um, you know. I kind of have to go through that sometimes with students. But again, it, it's boiling down to money and it's creative and catchy and um, I like it. So the one that I chose tonight is five ways people are dumb with money. And um, I feel like it's a an excellent way to deliver online content to students and have a wide variety of topics. So again, a screenshot of maybe one of the first questions. I like this because you kind of watch a little bit of the video, then they give you a question. I used these when we were 100% Zooming and students could do them on their own time, do a screenshot of their score, and then I would record that um, you know, for a grade, uh, pass fail kind of thing. So, um, but again, it gives you the feedback if you get the question right. And it gives you some interesting things like sunk cost fallacy, which I think would be a fabulous name for a stock market team. Um, anyway, um, so while discussing the fact bag activity with your class, consider the questions after watching the Ed Puzzle and relate them to the bag they wanted. Like what is behavioral finance? What is the endowment effect? What is the sunk cost fallacy? What is transition utility? And my question to y'all is, when do you plan to register and take the finance challenge? So um, again, those are all some kind of fun thoughts, again, kind of in within that um, Ed Puzzle, which again, we didn't watch, but the link is there. So y'all can find it and drop it into your Google Classroom tomorrow, along with the link to sign up for the finance challenge. Um, so I think that um, imagine a seesaw with spending and savings as the riders. How much do you spend? Personal finance is trying to manage your own expenses based on the money you are earning. Living within your means is a method of managing spending. 
And then on the flip side, how much do you save? A false sense of savings can occur when you have debt on credit cards with high interest, while boasting that your fact bag or low interest savings account is full of cash. And so making decisions regarding how to balance savings and spending on your wants and needs is like riding a seesaw. You have to decide if the extremes are worth the risk and enjoyment, breaking even is hard work and a balancing act. So again, here are your links. You can open as many tabs as I have open and get this done. All right, thank you, Erica. And I'll be sending out um, this presentation tomorrow. So you'll have all of those links um, tomorrow with that email. So does anyone have any questions for Erica before we switch over to Kurt and the Econ Challenge? Any finance challenge questions? Oh. Oh. Go ahead, Stephanie. Erica, I was going to ask, um, first of all, good evening. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, you first started doing this with a part that was challenging to you and conveying this to your students, or is there anything that we need to know as um, to look out for when trying to do this with our students? I'm not sure if I got that all that. Can y'all, am I breaking up? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, Stephanie, could you ask that question in the chat? You were kind of um, off and on with your audio there. I was gonna sure. turn off my, my video thinking that it might be me, but um, I think what possibly what I heard was, did I find anything really challenging for specific students? But go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll take, we'll, um, I'll try to address it. I will tell you that number one, you cannot guess who might be the next brilliant finance challenge winner. You, you will not be able to guess that by having students sit in your room because um, you know I have been pleasantly surprised. There are some students that love to take multiple choice online tests and they may not be your best student in class, but they can definitely buckle down and take a test and totally surprise you and get a check. Um, so, and even if they don't get a check, they can completely surprise you and be competitive. So um, I would not say that, that I could ever have guessed. Some of my students, maybe I could have guessed that they would have placed, but some absolutely could not have guessed that they would have been the brilliant ones to, um, to take the lead and, and win what they did. So was that your question, Stephanie? Yeah, she said that was her question in the chat. Okay. Okay, so I'm like, let them pick their teams. I never stack the teams. Let the kids pick their teams. They usually pick the same stock market game teams, which I would encourage y'all to play that too. Uh, and so I know Amanda's playing. Uh, Kurt, I don't know if, Kurt is, if Kurt's playing, but um, I saw Amanda's name on the advisor roster. So that's how I know she's out there. But any other questions? Alrighty, and Erica's um, email will be at the end of this presentation. If you think of anything, um, you'll have her email that you can email or any questions. And that competition is for middle and high school, two separate divisions. So middle schoolers compete against middle schoolers and high school against high schoolers. All right, Kurt, if you can go ahead and share your screen. And I don't have access to my, to my screen. Erica, can you continue the, the, oh, the share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, do you mind if it's like tiny so that, because I, can you read all that? I can read all that. I can see it. Okay. Yeah, I, I had trouble. <laughs> but my, um, my access is at a different, different uh, website. So um, uh, just want to say a few things about the econ challenge. I haven't been able to participate in the econ challenge in the last uh, two competitions. One of them because of COVID was canceled, I guess. And then last year, um, the issue that we had last year was that um, I didn't have any students in economics in the spring. All of my classes were in the fall. So when it came time for spring and we were all online, uh, I couldn't access any kids. I couldn't get the kids to, to, um, to, to, to 
to join. And so it's very easy. It's very um, um, simple to organize it when you're face to face. But what was difficult was organizing it with the um, with the virtual. So uh, congratulations and kudos to Sarah Ostergaard at Irmo. She racked up and um, she swept it, didn't she, last year? She swept the uh, um, spring. I think she swept the spring, right? Right. There was. I thought there was only one competition yes. last year. Yeah. So she swept the spring, and uh, I did a little math, Erica, while you were talking about the incentives. And uh, as a as a master teacher for Sarah, she got, of course, the hundred dollar um, incentive to compete in a uh, in any competition. But this one counts, of course, the Econ Challenge does. And then she won uh, first place, second place, and third place in the David Ricardo division. So 50 plus 35 plus 25, um, that's a nice little date night. She got uh, a $210 uh, paycheck for competing. So um, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you, SC Economics, for making this possible. Uh, I don't think Sarah, Sarah's not in here, but I don't think um, she's going to sweep it this year because I, uh, I, I'm going to field the team as well. And uh, I have already registered. Megan, thanks for letting me in. I wasn't able to navigate the uh, site without registering, uh, registering but I uh, got confirmation this morning that, uh, that we're in. So uh, welcome and hello to everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Kurt Stiglbauer, and this is, uh, I think, 35 years now in, in teaching, and about 30 of it was in uh, or has been in economics. So uh, a little bit different this year. I've gone virtual, completely virtual at uh, five, which is Lexington five, uh, Richland five. It's the flexible, innovative virtual education. So I'm completely virtual. But um, we're going we're gonna to get around that this year with the um, changing of the system. We've we got an econ challenge that competes in the fall as well as in the spring. So, um, so watch out. Anyway, what we're going to do in these, uh, these very few minutes is show you how to register for the econ challenge. It is uh, a very simple website. It is exactly the same as the finance challenge. It's all on the SC Economics website, and it is extremely user-friendly. And any time in the last mm, probably 20 years, I've been competing in the uh, in the econ challenge. I want to say 20 years ago, we went to Atlanta as part of the regional um uh, regional competition. We're like rock stars. They put us on a, uh, SC Economics put us on a tour bus. <laughs> we had eight students and, uh, and, and two or three teachers, and uh, we we're taking up that full rock star tour bus that they, uh, that they uh, got for us and went to um, Hotlanta and competed. And it was, it was amazing. The, the kids were just uh, in awe. Um, literally their jaws were dropping as we were pulling into Atlanta and as we entered into the room. But enough about that. Uh, what we're going to do tonight in, the, in just a few minutes is uh, talk about the Econ Challenge as a, uh, as a whole with an overview. And then uh, I want to say navigate the, e the Econ Challenge site, the SC Economics uh, Challenge site, but it's exactly the same as, uh, as the Finance Challenge site. Um, picking teams, uh, registering, it's all, uh, it's all stuff that Erica explained. So we may just take a, a peek at which site to go to. Um, it, it, and then we'll uh, go through some secrets of success. We'll go through the, uh, uh, the secrets to um, getting everybody in, enrolled and enlisted and registered and, and excited about it. And then uh, a sneak peek, uh, preview, sneak peek at how to win. Um, I, I can't remember too many years, there have been some, but I can't remember too many years that uh, uh, my teams from Ridgeview High School haven't taken first or second or third. The toughest competition, uh, I got to say, was from uh, that, that other Stigglebauer team, Amanda. I think the last time we competed, um, she took first and I took second. She had a, she had a ringer, so... That's one of the secrets, get you a ringer. 
All right, well, uh, one of the big changes this year is that there's a competition in the fall, uh, October 4th, so it's coming up. It's not quite starting um, next week like the Econ Challenge, but October 4th is pretty soon, gives you plenty of time to, um, how can I put this? Voluntell your kids that, uh, hey, there's gonna be a uh, Econ Challenge competition and we're all going to register and we're all gonna pick teams and it's gonna be a hoot. Uh, throw some incentives, incentives matter. One of the biggest, easiest concepts to teach in economics is that incentives matter. Um, you look at the dates though, October 4th is the starting date and November 24th is the ending date. Um, one of the tidbits of advice I would, uh, I would throw out there is that if you're going to compete, which I hope everybody does because it's a whole lot of fun, uh, kids love it. Um, you, you can make a bunch of money doing it as a teacher, but also as kids, kids, kids can make the money as well. And um, just don't wait until November 24th, because November 24th, you're going to see everybody disappear for Thanksgiving and, um, and, and not, <laughs> not be able for some reason to, um, to compete. So don't wait until the end, jump in. Don't jump in too early because the kids haven't learned the material yet, but um, um, don't wait until that Thanksgiving week. In the spring, of course, if you have your uh, economics classes in the spring, all the better. You'll be, uh, you'll be competing when it's fresh and uh, seniors uh, get excited about getting out of the house and getting to econ day. Econ day is the... Uh, the culmination of the grand prize invitation, the, the golden ticket. It is a whole day of economics. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the chat, uh, finally. Um, so uh, it's a whole day of economics and a lot of kids are hesitant to sign up for it, but it's a, it's a, it's a field trip, it's a day off. It is um, uh, free food and lots and lots of cash prizes. All right, so two good competitions, and that's different. And uh, two different levels, I believe, as well. You've got the middle school level. Help me, Megan, on that one. I don't know anything about the middle school, but the, the middle school level is competing as well? Yeah, so this is the first um, year that we're opening up to middle school. So this will be the, the first season middle schoolers can compete. Against middle schoolers? Correct, yes. Uh, you know, I, I asked that question because the – the regional competition that we qualified for and uh, went to Atlanta for was won by kids who had never taken a single economics class. They were uh, some school out of North Carolina, some magnet school where they had a club and met every day and went to um, decathlons and competitions, finance challenges and econ challenges. And they won our region and got to go to New York City. And it was like, I looked at those kids and they were not, could not have been in high school. If they were, they were freshmen. And it was like, wow, my seniors lost to some uh, freshmen. So uh, <laughs> I would hate to lose them <laughs> middle schoolers. It would bring flashbacks. Uh, I hate to lose anyway, but there are two divisions. So if you're, uh, if you're not teaching the, uh, the AP classes, if you're not teaching the IB classes or honors kids, um, it's, it's uh, wide open for David Ricardo, which is first time uh, Econ Challenge competitors, as well as um, your CP classes or regular classes, uh, college prep classes. Um, I had a student who was a sophomore. I had a, a group of sophomores who competed and um, I was gonna be able to use one of my champions, one of my state champions in the competition last year. And then everything fell apart because of COVID. But uh, you know, if they're if they've never competed before, they uh, they can compete in the David Ricardo, and that's that's um, that's entertaining to watch. Adam Smith competitions on Econ Day, when the kids get up there with their buzzers, and uh, whoo, these are these are top notch smart kids, uh, the best of the best South Carolina has, and um, it's it's really impressive. So. Uh, tough competition all around. The format uh, in both levels or at both levels, the Adam Smith and the David Ricardo, 
is uh, to have three rounds or three types of questions. When you um, strategize or put your strategy together, keep in mind that there is a, a round of economics question, uh, microeconomics questions, a round of macroeconomics questions, and a round of uh, trade and current events questions. And um, what that means is that when you put four kids, if we can go back just one second, uh, Erica. Um, I'm sorry. You put, you put four kids on a team. I like to always put a, uh, a specialist for uh, a, a, a person who's going to research and study and focus on micro questions, micro topics, supply and demand, uh, determinants of supply, equilibrium, pricing. Um, because what happens is you take the top scores, actually the top three scores from your team and count them. And the one that stinks it up just gets tossed in the trash. So always have somebody really strong in micro, always have somebody really strong in macro and uh, put somebody on trade and put somebody on current events. And um, you'll always have some really good anchor scores, some really good scores to, to I know it's an anger, but to bring your bring your averages up, uh, you know the, the the trade and current events questions are always always very similar. Uh, it's always something about Brexit. It's always about something uh, that has to do with um, you know NAFTA, the USMCA, and uh, tariffs, trade wars, comparative advantage, who who benefits. Uh, very predictable. So when you're preparing for these competitions and these tests. Um, Who's the chairman of the Fed? You better drill that into your kid's head a hundred thousand times because they don't even have to hear the question. They can beat the other team out by um, ringing the buzzer and answering them. So, um, you know, that's an overview of what to expect. The registration site is the same site as uh, uh, very similar uh, as the um, finance challenge site. It looks the same, acts the same. It's uh, it, the only thing different is the uh, Practice takes you to some different types of practice, and the uh, uh, practice level that's on the Econ Challenge site is a good practice for qualifying, but it doesn't do any good for um, once you make the state competition. Once you get to Econ Day, uh, it's going to take more than that to um, to win that competition. So I broke this into two different types of strategies, strategies for qualifying for Econ Day or, or making the cut, and then strategies for winning on, um, on the big day with the buzzers and everything. For starters, uh, you know, I, I hope everybody's here to compete and I hope everybody's here to learn how to um, uh, register and win. You know, when you put your team together, just make everybody take the qualifying test, even if they stink it up. Even if they have the flu and they're at home, they can still take the qualifying round. And that way, if, you're, if your smartest kid is just having a bad day, um, you can change your team membership, I guess is the way to say it. You can change your team membership to um, put together a dream team, or at least what I call a dream team. But they have to qualify. They have to take the test and they have to get in. So. If, uh, you know, if you're just picking and choosing, pre-selecting your teams, put everybody in there. It doesn't hurt. It's a good, uh, it's a good day. It, it makes them aware of what kinds of questions that are important. So that even if they don't know the questions or the answers, they'll, they'll see them later and they'll say, oh, this is a big deal. Um, I always pre-select teams of four. And a lot of times kids will say, I just want to be, I just want to be on the team of three. We don't want anybody else. We don't need anybody else. Um, keep in mind that that fourth body, that fourth brain, that fourth set of answers gets uh, thrown in the trash if it's not one of the highest three. Again, they take the top three scores and um, determine your qualifying based on that. So uh, another strategy for qualifying in past years, I have waited until the day that we test, the day that we compete to, to um, 
get everybody logged in and get all their registration straight. And it's just too complicated. So what I do is I pre-register students and uh, go ahead and plug their names in and just tell them this is this is the team that you're going to be on. And then later on, you can um, shuffle them around. Um, I do have my kids go to the practice test. I do have them uh, go to the website and, and try that one out before qualifying. And then the big day, the day of the event, I always plan a big celebration. I get my principal and uh, uh, administrators to order pizza or subs and drinks and candy and everything to get them all sugared up and excited about um, the qualifying day, the big event, the, uh, the econ challenge. Um, and, and again, don't schedule it for the last week of the competition. There are uh, illnesses, there are proms that pop up, there are uh, soccer games in the spring. There's always stuff that uh, is going to cause headaches. So don't wait until the end. Uh, I will say this, that uh, once you... Um, once you qualify, there are some practice tests that you can access on the National Econ Challenge uh, website that, uh, and I've got a link at the end, that are a little more complicated, well, they're a lot more complicated, they're more difficult to register, you sign your kids up, your teams up, and then you access the, um, the practice tests. So that's where the, um, that's where the real preparation for Econ Day and Econ Challenge uh, comes from. All right, I will say this. Uh, when you get your teams together and, and, and if you get all your classes and all your students and, and you, you, know, you compete with 20 teams or 30 teams, they're not all gonna make it. And um, the good news is that when you go to Econ Day, you can, um, you can take your top students, shuffle them around and um, pick and choose, put together dream teams. So just make sure that everybody uh, uh, qualifies and everybody takes the test and everybody's participating. Uh, like I said, make a big, make a big event of it um, and invite everybody, let them bring their friends. It's, it's, it's a party. It's a celebration. All right. Now, as far as winning, winning the, uh, the state championship and qualifying for regionals, um, like I said, pre-pick your, uh, your, your teams and look at test scores. A lot of times students will say, well, you know, what I wanna do is put the, the kids with the highest averages on these, uh, on these teams. And it's like, you know, some of my best students have, how can I put this? Some of my best students don't do well on tests and some of the, um, um, poorest performers on the econ challenge are, are making you know a's in the class so go on their testing abilities go on their test scores look at how they do on their tests and put together your four best then your next four best and get some dream teams um, like i said before designate specialists get a macro guy a micro guy a trade guy and a current events guy and i say guys um let's see how can i say this always put at least one girl on every team. Because if you have a team of all guys, my nephew was, <laughs> last uh, Econ Challenge, I went up against my nephew's team and they were just so silly. You put a girl in the mix and they straighten up, they, uh, uh, they concentrate, they, they try to impress and they're not um, so easily distracted. I don't know what it is, I don't know why. Uh, how to win, meet regularly. What we used to do is uh, set up lunch. Everybody had a different schedule, but set up lunch meetings, get the buzzers and, and practice with the buzzers. If you make it to econ day, you can have the brightest, smartest kids that just get so nervous and so um, you know, self-questioning that they won't press the buzzers. Get buzzers. Put them up there, let them buzz them, let them see what it sounds like, let them get used to that. Because um, I've had kids who knew every answer, but they were just afraid to press those buzzers. They were afraid of the people watching them. They were afraid of uh, making a mistake. Let them make mistakes. Let them make mistakes in um, in practice. All right. So um, 
a, a couple other things that you might want to do when you, I know you're going to make it, when you make it to uh, Econ Day, uh, go ahead and bring substitutes, not substitutes for your class, substitutes for your um, team members. <laughs> because what happens is somebody always gets lost. Somebody always, uh, you know, oh yeah, couldn't make it. Had to go to, uh, you know, see my cousin or something crazy comes up. And you're like looking at your best team with only two people. So always bring um, more than four. Always bring substitutes. And lastly, study, 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 study. Um, get your kids to take those online practice tests. Make some uh, homemade practice tests. Remember, they, they ask the same types of questions. The, the, the econ challenge is um, very predictable. A lot of the questions are very predictable. Go through your most important um, concepts, ask them questions about it. There's some John Morton books for uh, um, uh, AP uh, micro, AP macro. There's some John Morton books that have excellent practice questions, uh, multiple choice questions, as well as fill in the blank questions. And both of them are good preparation for um, the big day, the, 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 the spotlight. My kids love, and I don't know why, but they love quizzes. There are quizzes for, uh, for Econ Day, for lots and lots of basic economic questions that the kids just don't know yet. Because uh, if you're doing it in the uh, semester course, the, uh, the competition that's for semester classes, half the time they haven't had half the material when it's time to qualify or when it's time to go to Econ Day. So the, the basics that, you know, you know off the top of your head and most kids know off the top of their head once they're finished, they've never seen before. So quizzes and textbooks and quizlets, those are all pretty, uh, pretty good resources. Um, oh, one last, one last thing on the um, uh, uh, strategies. Can you go back to one, one slide to the strategies? There are videos. If you're teaching virtually, there are AP daily vid uh, videos that uh, review, um, right? For, for AP kids who take the AP class in the fall and then take the AP exam in the spring, they're AP daily review videos. Well, if you're competing in uh, Econ Day in the spring, it's an excellent time to use those AP daily reviews, not for the AP exam, but for the, um, the tough questions that come with the Adam Smith competition uh, econ day. Okay, so uh, that's about it for the, the strategies and the resources. The practice tests that I was talking about that are, that are difficult, that are, that are um, guarded, I guess. They don't just let you pop in, take them five, six, 10 times. They, uh, they ask you to register for them. So I've got the uh, link for you to go to the National Council of Economics. And you can go to the assessment center and register for test after test. But they keep track of who's taking them and how many. And that's it. I wanted to show you a picture of, uh, I guess, my last team that won. Um, one of them was a sophomore. The others were seniors. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's possible to excite all levels. I remember that they were just so proud of uh, winning and so proud of competing that uh, after they won, they all went one by one outside and took pictures with the trophies, pictures with the sign, pictures. Uh, they were just, it was like a, it was like a big deal. It is a big deal. So that's it. Um, you know, that's my part. That's my strategy. And uh, it, it seems to work. All right. Thank you, Kurt. Um, does anyone have any questions for Kurt about the econ challenge? Thank you, Stephanie. Good stuff. Thanks, Kurt. Hey, uh, it always it always makes enough money for uh, date night, especially when I'm competing against some of Amanda's teams. Uh, plenty of money for dates. Plenty of money for dinner. Um, and I will add in there about the middle school competition for Econ Day. This year, we are just taking the top high school students. So you can still compete in middle school and you can still get that incentive money. But Econ Day, 
um, we are just going to have the high school students. So um, by participating in this professional development, since it was led by two of our master teachers, you are eligible to get a $100 check after you submit an evaluation, a reflection, and evidence that you have taught something in your classroom um, that does really anything with financial literacy. And if it's with the Econ Challenge and Finance Challenge, then that would be double awesome. Um, so tomorrow in the email that I'm going to send out, you will get more information on that with the link to go through and do the um, evaluation. So I'm going to go ahead and put the Google Form link here in the chat. And if you will fill that out, if you want to right now, you can. It'll also be in the email that I send out tomorrow. Um, but if you uh, come to five events hosted by SE Econ, um, you will get a $100 check. And that is for the fall. And we have lots of webinars coming up. So if you're looking to get your five in, you can check out our website. And um, we have a webinar every other week for the fall. And then if you want our emails, I think that last slide, Erica has our um, emails. If you have any questions for us, feel free to shoot us an email. And we're right at almost seven. So once you get that Google form link, you are free to go. Thank you so much for joining us.